Welcome. My name is Dave Helfrich, and I am here with Pastor Stephen Friedrich and Allison Lisdis and Helen Phelps and Jim Jones and Matthias Lisdis in the beauty of this sanctuary. It is a special place, and we are honored to share this time with you. But because of the incarnation, your space is a special place. So as you worship with us, prepare it. Get some flowers or get a bowl of water and anoint yourself and remind yourselves of your baptism. Make it a place of life today. For Sunday mornings, even in Lent, celebrates Easter, the promised gift of resurrected life for all of God's people. We welcome you to worship this morning, and we offer a Sabbath reflection entitled, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Worship continues with the morning dialogue. O Lord, open my lips, and my, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship and praise. Worship continues with our gathering hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Come Thou Fount 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. O God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Boys and girls, come up closer. There are, as I'm sure, special things in your house that you could talk to me about, but I want to spend a couple of minutes today talking about special things in God's house that are really, really important. The first thanks to Pastor Stephen telling us, is a baptismal font. It is here that we begin a relationship with God by God's grace. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit begins your relationship with God within the context of God's church. It is a special place, Pastor Stephen. Behind me is a special place. It's called the altar When we come back together with face-to-face worship, the Eucharist will be on this altar as a symbol of God's resurrected love every Sunday morning. This is my body. This is my blood. This is a very special part of this place. This pulpit is a very special place in this sanctuary. It's where the Word of God is preached. It's where the Word of God is heard from the gospel. It is God telling us about the love of Jesus Christ for all of God's children. Not only you and me, but all of God's children. And so, what a special place this is. There is another thing that's very special in this room, and that's this. They're all marked up because of social distancing. But this is a pew. A pew is a church seat. Because when we are able, we all gather together as brothers and sisters in Christ. What a special seat pews are. So we have a font, and we have an altar, and we have a pulpit, and we have a pew. Really, really special things in the life of this church. And I almost forgot. There's one more special thing here. Seems kind of silly when you talk about a font and a pulpit to talk about a cup of water. How is this important? Jesus tells us that it is. 
And it's really important for us to understand why. So pay attention today, because we are going to hear that this is almost as important as all of the rest of this. Let's pray together. For the cup of cold water that you have given all of us, and the cup of cold water that you invite us to give others, we give you thanks for in doing all of that, we become the church. We become your people. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from the 28th chapter of Jeremiah. Through a symbolic action, Jeremiah insisted that Judah and all the surrounding nations should submit to the king of Babylon. Hananiah contradicted the words of Jeremiah, who in reply insisted that Hananiah's rosy prediction should not be believed until it came true. God confirmed the word of Jeremiah and sentenced the false prophet Hananiah to death. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 89 responsively. Your love, O Lord, forever I will sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Our second reading begins with the sixth chapter of Romans. Sin is an enslaving power which motivates us to live self-serving, disobedient lives. Sin's final payoff is death. We, however, have been set free from sin's slavery to live obediently under God's grace, whose end is the free gift of eternal life. Do not let your sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. 
So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. We are going to be spending the next two months together in the middle section of Matthew's Gospel. There is a harshness about this Gospel. Here in Matthew, Jesus is seen as a Moses returned figure. There are apparently ethical and moral issues going on in this community. And there's a harshness here. What's interesting, the first Moses wrote, we assume, five books of the Bible. In Matthew, this new Moses, Jesus, has five sections of teaching. The text that is before us today is a part of that teaching. Jesus says to the twelve and to us, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please join me in a word of prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm 65 years old. I've been around the block a few times. And I am here to tell you that some of those blocks were tough. The civil, uh, civil rights unrest of the 60s. The AIDS epidemic of the 80s. The Catholic sex scandal of the 90s. 9-11 in the 2000s. But I don't think, ladies and gentlemen, there has ever been a more difficult time to be the church than right now. COVID-19 is bad enough. But when you add racial injustice and division, the likes of this, this country is facing, is it any wonder that many of us feel bombarded? And if you think either one of those has a simple answer, you're kidding yourselves. My fear is that both of them are marathons, not sprints. Doesn't it make you want to go to the beach and get away from it all? In the middle of all that, Jesus comes, as we just heard, to talk to us once again about discipleship, not in here but out there. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to a little one, to a disenfranchised one, to a discriminated one, that person is a follower of me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get this straight. Every time we share a cup of cold water, we participate in a kingdom moment. Because every time we do that, we not only look like Jesus, we welcome Jesus. More often times than not, it's not, Jesus is not only the one who's giving the water, Jesus is the one who is receiving it. Don't you remember that story toward the end of Matthew's Gospel? 
where Jesus told his first disciples and to us, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was the stranger and you welcomed me. And now I am your black and your brown sisters and brothers and you join hands with me. Whoever does this to all of my children does it to me. So where's our hope? It's right here. The kingdom of God is built and the king is witnessed to by something as simple as a cup of cold water. Can I give you some examples? Some of us are risking a whole lot in this COVID-19 pandemic by being on the front lines as doctors and nurses and meat cutters and police officers doing their duties. Some of us are doing that, but all of us can pray that God will gift all of them with a hedge of protection and then we can thank them for their efforts. Some of us will join our black and brown sisters and brothers in peaceful demonstrations for social injustice and racial equality. Some of us will do that, but all of us. Each and every one of us can begin to see them for who they really are. Equally loved sisters and brothers of a God who has created everything and everyone. Some of us will reprioritize our schedules in the fall if COVID-19 still exists and teach our children. Some of us will do that, but all of us can wear masks and practice social distancing as two simple ways to provide health and hospitality to each other, even the most vulnerable ones among us. Some of us will advocate for economic support for organizations that stand up and fight for so against social injustice when it comes to education and health care. Some of us will do that. But all of us can make a pledge to refrain from racist language and demand the people in our presence do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two marathons out there. And all most of us have in our hands is a cup of cold water. It's enough, Jesus says. Do you remember the time he fed 5,000 people with a little boy's lunch and had 12 baskets full left over? Jesus tells us it's more than enough. Ladies and gentlemen, you listening? Black lives matter. Brown lives matter. White lives matter. All lives matter. And in that world out there of COVID-19 and racial injustice, there's nothing more important that a disciple of Jesus Christ can say than that. Except, except maybe we can do more than say it. Maybe we can live it and model it and do it and fight for it. Will you join me? Will you take the cup of cold water in your hand as I hope to take the cup of cold water that's in mine and build a kingdom with it? and witness to a king with it? Know this. The minute we do that, we not only become Jesus for them, we see Jesus in them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the heart of the Christian faith. Can you hear this 
a new song Breaking out from the children of freedom Every race and every nation Sing it out, sing a new hallelujah Let us sing love to the nations Bringing hope of the grace that's freed us Make it known and make it famous Sing it out, sing a new hallelujah Worship continues as we confess our baptismal faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and with the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of compassion, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations. Shape our shared future and give us hearts eager to join a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire all authorities, law enforcement personnel, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned, especially those suffering from coronavirus. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of community, we give you thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. 
Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. We here at Resurrection are going to share the peace with a bow or an open hand. We would invite you in the privacy of your own home to do what we can't hear, to embrace one another with the peace of Christ. The peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be 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 with you. As we have been saying for a couple of months now, it's here that we typically take an offering. Thanks to all of you who have been giving online to support these and other ministries that we all hold dear. All of us can do that, continue that, or begin to do that by going online and sharing a thanksgiving in order that these ministries and God's work in this place might continue. LCR musicians have offered a musical offering to glorify God. We give thanks for surely the presence of the Lord. Our service continues with the thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Ever living God, author of creation, we give you thanks for your gift of water that brings life and refreshes the earth. We bless and praise you, for by water and the word we are cleansed from sin and receive everlasting life. Join us again this day to the saving death of Christ. Renew in us the living fountain of your grace. And raise us with Christ Jesus to live in newness of life. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we conclude our service, we send you forth in mission with a few announcements. The Must Summer Grocery Program will continue through the months of June and July. You can bring donations here at LCR between 2 and 4 p.m. on Saturday. Also, we are really hoping to open on July 11th and 12th for face-to-face worship. We are keeping our eye on the trends and we will keep you posted as we decide the best course of action to keep the most vulnerable among us safe. We will be communicating through the weekly, flock notes, and emails, so please be on the lookout for those. Now receive the blessing of Almighty God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one, evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. God.